Good morning, everyone. So it's my pleasure to be here today as a banking supervisor to discuss with you, on one hand, a rather straightforward issue, how banks are important to entrepreneurs by providing access to credit. And on the other hand, it's not, because as credit cycles are, very, are linked very much to economic cycles and economic growth, and this directly affects entrepreneurs. There is no doubt that banks can contribute substantially to economic development by provi providing credit to companies. And this is especially evident in Europe where alternative financing to companies such as capital markets are not so de developed as compared, for example, to the US. On the other hand, the same way by regulating the credit supply, banks can affect companies and real economy the other way around. We all evidence in the last years and still see today that what we would call a credit crunch or credit bust so, or a shortage in credit supply. And let me focus a little bit on the reasons of shortage in credit supply. The general opinion is that in the aftermath of the crisis, including this one, banks try, try and try to allocate their capital very wisely because they feel shortage of capital. So some banks lack capital, I still believe, for the reason that they cannot make all the provisions they need to make, so they just save the capital still and they don't want to issue any new credits or too many new credits. The second reason could be the upcoming new regulation, so an inc increasing capital requirements for some banks, and it's an, a natural outcome that we see a new regulation coming af after something bad happens. Uh, thirdly, but not least, some banks have tightened their credit policies, and especially to some economic sectors because of what the bankers call this time we have learned our lessons and now we grant credits only to the best clients. So, and this is evident actually from the shift in, in bank balance sheets from private credit to sovereign credit. All these and many other reasons show that credit crunch and related to that cred credit tightening and credit improved credit standards to a lesser or greater extent have something to do and let us say it loudly with mistakes made by the banks in the past, in the past which have led us to unsustainable credit boom, to loose credit standards and inevitably credit losses at the end of the day. This further leads to a conclusion that in order to ensure sustainable long-term growth with all respects, long-term growth uh, in banking sector, in economy, and general wealth, it's of uh, utmost importance, first of all, to prevent unsustainable credit booms, which then lead inevitably to credit busts. All of these identified issues causing drastic changes in credit supply have negative side effects on real economy, financial standing of companies, unemployment, and on the well-being of society in general. So one can observe a direct link be between, first of all, long-term stability of banks, which affects stability of credit supply, which in turn affects companies and real economy, and finally, all three of these have something to do with sustainable long-term growth. So at the top of the list, we see that long-term stability of banks is crucial in ensuring long-term growth, thus my so my answer to today's session question, how can banking sector can contribute to long-term growth, would be ensuring long-term stability of a banking sector, which would preclude credit booms, asset price bubbles, and all, negative, and all negative externalities stemming from that. All other things being equal, I think the banks are profit-seeking and maximizing organizations, and this will ensure that necessary credit supply is in the economy as banks earn a lot of income from credit interest. So the tricky question here is how to ensure long-term stability of banks. 
So my focus is long-term stability and profitability versus short-term goals and profits. If one would look at root causes of, of this crisis, it's generally agreed that, first of all, focus on short-term goals rather than on long-term ones, wrong incentive remuneration systems, too little attention to risk control and too heavy focus on sales volumes, market shares, missing of wrong risk strategies that focus just on markets, shares, profits, but do not take into consideration risks or risk appetite of organization, all of these have led to problems we have today. So going even further, if one would look at visions, missions, and strategic goals of some banks, which, they, which the banks announce themselves, you could ask yourself how come those banks could make so, such large losses and even go bankrupt if they have those state-of-the-art visions, missions, goals, and strategic plans. I personally believe that the answer to all this is aligning the incentives in the right way. First of all, how to make banks really think about long-term risk-based profit, how to build right incentive remuneration systems, how to make bankers feel and think that banking is a risk management business, not just an ordinary business, just running, like running a bakery or a shoe store. This is not an easy task at the end of the day, because if you go deep into those questions, you shall find it that, that the answer lies in the incentive of the bankers, so how they are incentivized. I mean people who are running the banks. Thus when, so when drafting hundreds and thousands of pages of new regulation, we should always keep in mind that the right incentives that we want to see in bankers are the important ones, and in some cases, not another one risk ratio that we put on the bank. Thank you. <laughs>